Hi everyone. Um, welcome back to Frank uh, Repair Bench. This time we have a nice uh, Commodore Pet, which is uh, from this one is a uh, 3032, and this is the case uh, which is in a very sorry state, but I uh, will uh, repair it. Uh, uh, restore the case uh, later. Um, I'm now interested in uh, repairing the electronic board first. Here is the monitor part, uh, the CRT, and I'll really clean the keyboard, uh, which I'll bring uh, later. Um, I need to still extract uh, the power supply from the case, but in the meantime, and uh, started to clean the motherboard. Um, next check would be every diode and a few transistor. I will try to, to check them uh, with the multimeter and then check for electrolytics uh, if they are good or shorted maybe and check if no shorts on the rail like uh, I see many tantalum capacitors that could be shorted so I will see if there are any short on the power rails and after that I will try um, to power the power supply and see if the correct voltages are produced and if everything uh, goes good I will hook uh, together the monitor to the motherboard and the power supply and try to power on and see what happens. So this would be probably quite a long process to bring uh, this Commodore PET back to life. Okay, first power on and first uh, Tantalum capacitor smoked and you can see probably the black one, it wasn't black uh, just one minute ago. So here we go, the first uh, substitution. It didn't test the shorted, but uh, it started smoking uh, uh, just after I powered it on for the first time. That was uh, C43 on the 12 volts uh, rail, and I placed a new one. The 12 volts are okay, so. It was uh, just uh, tired to to be alive. And now we have the equivalent of the black screen for the pet. Uh, this indicates that uh, the screen part is uh, mostly working, uh, but probably the CPU didn't start or didn't go very far in uh, the boot sequence. So it's time for uh, more troubleshooting, but uh, I'm really happy because all the video part uh, and CRT part is uh, is fine. So let's try some troubleshooting. Okay, the first thing, uh, as always, uh, when uh, troubleshooting a uh, microprocessor. Uh, system is to check the input clock to the CPU which is on pin 37 on the 6502 so 39, 38, 37 uh, looks like uh, okay and then we have uh, 39 which should be a clock replica and there isn't anything so Oh, yeah, here it is. It's just uh, a dirty pin. And on pin 3, there is another phase of the clock. Yes. Okay, next uh, is the reset signal. And it's high. So it should be okay. Okay, so the first checks. Uh, positive. Um, 
I will check on the schematic and see what else uh, I can uh, test. Uh, we made some progress. Uh, uh, the first thing to check, uh, since they were also socketed, it was the content of the ROMs, and I found uh, two of them uh, bad, so I replaced it with uh, uh, regular uh, EPROMs and they are not very common types but i have a lot of them this was uh, 27 16 and uh, 25 and the other are mostly okay but uh, well if they work at the uh, i will keep uh, them uh, the original ones until uh, uh, they file if they fail okay now next step it's, it looks uh, good uh, next step is uh, hooking up the keyboard and, uh, and make some more tests here is not so good update you see no blinking cursor and uh, no keys now what I did is uh, just swapping uh, the two PIA the 6520 so this one now is uh, in control of the keyboard and the keyboard doesn't work anymore so this uh, 6520 is broken yeah, I must find uh, another one, I don't have any spare or uh, maybe design a replacement with the modern uh, components uh, let's see ok another great update now Thanks to the fox uh, at uh, CBM hackers uh, mailing list, uh, I just discovered that uh, the 6520 uh, can be replaced uh, with uh, some other uh, similar chips uh, like uh, the 6821, and I happen to have uh, a few 6821 around uh, and it works fine and also cleaned the um, tape uh, connectors both of them and uh, try to save uh, and uh, read back uh, some program from tape and it works fine so I'm going to test uh, the user port and uh, uh, I triple E four eight eight port and see if everything works fine. After a few hours of use, it died. And this is the situation now when booting. And I suspect there is uh, some uh, ROM issue because the kernel is uh, supposed to clean the screen. What uh, exactly? happens and then start the basic uh, so probably the kernel part uh, is working and the basic part is not so I will investigate on the ROM and sockets and so on um, start uh, to change uh, every component is not something uh, that I like to do when I repair something uh, now the um, uh, the pet board is uh, quite large, it has a lot of components and uh, in such cases uh, the problem may be almost uh, everywhere and uh, I found on the internet uh, a kernel image which is uh, in this uh, uh, apron now but those are just some tests in particular uh, it is testing uh, the RAM and the video RAM making uh, alternating two screens this one with all characters and this one indicates uh, with all the G that uh, the test that uh, this program is making on uh, the main RAM looks good uh, now it doesn't mean that uh, the problem it is not in the RAM, but 
Uh, it's a good clue on uh, what is working uh, in this board and uh, what is not. And I think uh, the problem uh, may be in the addressing of the RAM if this program uh, doesn't check for address conflict or something. Or maybe probably in this, uh, this chip which is a uh, uh, the address uh, decoder for every ROM and uh, I.O. and uh, other things it is a uh, 16 lines decoder and I want to test this uh, uh, hypothesis further before uh, trying to remove this one Okay, finally, after much hours of troubleshooting, uh, probably we are making some progress. And I could exclude the uh, address decoder by removing the CPU and driving the single uh, addresses uh, lines uh, with the uh, resistors to ground and checking that the various lines get activated uh, with the right address. It's only three lines to test all the ROM, so it didn't take long. I didn't document uh, the process because it's just uh, um, not uh, really uh, difficult to do, and it didn't show any fault on the address decoder. Now, uh, just did another um, test, as suggested by the fine folks uh, at uh, CBM hackers mailing list which is to swap these two signals which are the uh, column select of uh, the first and second bank so this is the test uh, the ROM test running and what I found that uh, with the correct uh, uh, column select it appears to uh, the RAM to be all good uh, but if I swap the two wires and the two these two resistors, uh, the screen uh, gets almost full of bad RAM. That it don't make much sense. So now I disconnected this uh, bank of RAM and connected the column address select to five volts. So this first bank is not used at all and the test uh, is still all run good. So basically this test doesn't even uh, know that this bank of RAM is populated. Probably the test was made for a 16k uh, pet. So the test only works on, the, on this bank of uh, RAM. So what I'm gonna do now is uh, to um, connect to 5 volts to this other bank the one being tested because it is good and uh, use this uh, select to test the other bank ok progress uh, the red wire is uh, connected to uh, 5 volts and the blue wire is uh, on the only select that uh, works with this test and some bad RAM it's quite random every screen is different with the bad RAM uh, moving around so probably is uh, one of these chips or more than one of this so I would try to look at the levels on uh, each one of these because one of the chip is one one bit and uh, I'll try to see if I identify the bad one or maybe I'm gonna try to piggyback uh, um, a good chip over uh, each of one and see when the test uh, shows uh, all good so stay tuned so where you will start changing chips because I never identified any problem with the oscilloscope uh, and uh, piggybacking so 
I said I would start from the first one and then going top down uh, yeah, until I found the problem. And then I thought just uh, start from the bottom because it's always the last one. So I just changed one one chip and it did the trick. So it's my lucky day anyway. Okay, uh, during this long troubleshooting uh, I have to put back this resistor where they belong and uh, eliminate all the wiring. Uh, I first um, socketed, uh, changed the socket uh, on kernel, both basic uh, ROMs because these uh, original sockets are very bad. And uh, I just uh, tried to identify any chip uh, getting really hot. And I found this one which is missing, which is uh, not related for the fault, but it was bad. It is a uh, um, bus driver for the IEEE 488 uh, uh, dry, um, interface. So I have to get a replacement for this one before I can try the, this interface. Uh, and socketed this chip uh, because I didn't understand that uh, all the the test ROM worked. Uh, but anyway, it's uh, not a bad the move to add sockets, just not uh, changing or adding uh, the sockets and all this all the chips because if it's not broken, don't fix it. That's my um, philosophy. So, okay, unless something else uh, goes wrong, uh, I need to test the user port, which I will do shortly. Uh, maybe not today because it's late. And test the IEEE interface. Uh, then, uh, probably this uh, path will, uh, will be declared uh, good. Uh, until uh, something else breaks uh, in the meantime, I mean, I hope not, but it's very old, so it can happen, like it happened uh, just one time. So see what happens next. You wouldn't believe it, I just uh, put back the column address LX resistors. And the black screen again. So it looks like uh, maybe not uh, all the RAM, uh, the bad RAM was identified. So back we go again. Um, after changing uh, some other uh, chips or just socketing them. I just gave up on uh, guessing and swapped the two column addresses uh, select uh, again. So that's allow the machine to boot. They wrote a little program to understand uh, what uh, chip uh, is uh, uh, broken and uh, you see it reads uh, always 110, 128, uh, 128 more than it writes. So it's the bit uh, number 7 or number 8 if you count uh, from 1. And from the schematic, uh, RAM uh, data 7 uh, goes to E2 and uh, if you scroll uh, there is J2 there so I now know it is in this bank default because I swapped the, the gas uh, signals uh, so I have this one to change and let's see if I'm right okay this time uh, I put back uh, again the two resistors where they belong and we have life and what's interesting is that uh, both of the file the chips were on the same uh, 
data line D7. And I don't believe this is a, a, just a coincidence, but uh, I don't have an explanation right now. And I hope there is not uh, something else broken in this pet. Um, I will carry on the tests. And the lesson here is if you start uh, changing random chips, uh, the result uh, is uh, random. <laughs> Probably not what you expect. So I assumed that uh, the error back was the same uh, and uh, I assumed I would uh, just change uh, some few chips and uh, get results, but I could have changed both uh, all of them uh, on this bank and I would not uh, solve anything. So it's always best to uh, do some investigations and uh, get the right uh, the right fault before changing chips uh, at random. So. Now I will wait for uh, uh, this replacement chip and we'll carry on some other tests on the machine and see if it's uh, fixed or not. Okay, some more testing uh, of this pet. Uh, just uh, hooked uh, a parallel cable uh, to uh, a long laptop with the CDM link on the, on the Linux and loaded the uh, um, very nice uh, Space Invaders clone and so this means that uh, most of the parallel port is working if not uh, everything so uh, still missing uh, the um, IEEE transceiver and then uh, I will test the last port uh, but uh, tape uh, works I'm just loading uh, things from the tape too this is with uh, the still the missing chip. Um, just loaded the small IEEE 488 interface test, which can be mostly tested uh, without uh, connecting anything because the transceiver has um, read and write lines uh, connected together. So let's try again what the replacement chip now. The program is now running in loop and there is no error reported. As you can see there is the new chip in uh, its socket. So everything uh, is good now. In the meantime I also found uh, a replacement 6520 from a member of CBM Hager's mailing list. And uh, I changed uh, the two ceramic uh, 4116 chips uh, with this uh, more common plastic ones so I think the, um, this repair is completed I uh, also want to show you this is a vintage uh, expansion uh, ROM from the time and it can be activated by SIS 37000 and as you can see it works I had to substitute the socket uh, there uh, because the original one uh, didn't make this ROM to, to work. So it's real end of test and of repair of this uh, CBM uh, PET 3032. Thank you for watching.